But I will be looking at the digital to analog converter inside LPC2378. This is one of the easiest peripherals to use uh, with the LPC2378. This is a 10 bit DAC, that means you will get a 10 bit digital value and you will be getting the corresponding analog value. Uh, DAC also has a VRAF, that means your analog value it cannot be more than VRAF. And since the ground is at zero, your output cannot be less than zero also. That means you cannot have a negative output. It should be always positive and it should be between zero and VRAF. DAC, it is using a DAC clock, but the digital to analog conversion that is based on register string or a register ladder which doesn't require any clock. So this doesn't have any direct impact of a digital to analog conversion. But this clock is used for accessing the internal register of DSE. Okay, so while programming, first of all, we will have to, of course, configure the pin cell A out. The single unlock out is on port 0, pin 26. So pin cell register 1, we will have to configure with 21 and 20 to 10. One and the clock can be configured in PCLK register 0 bits 23 and 22. We can use the default clock CCLK by 4. And DSE by default it is on. Okay, So we don't have to do anything in the pconfig register to turn it on. Uh, there is a single register inside this where you'll be writing your 10 bit data. So similar to your ADC, you are not writing from bit 0. Instead, you are writing from bit number 6 to bit number 15. So that constitutes the 10 bit digital data which will be converted into analog. Now the speed of conversion and power consumption, you can have a trade off by setting this bias bit. If bias bit is zero, uh, it will consume 700 microampere and it will take one microsecond for conversion. If it is one, it will take 2.5 microsecond. It will take more time, but it will consume only half the current. So that's it, you just have to write the value to this register and wait for at least this much time before you write the next value so that DAC conversion happens. So we will demonstrate DAC uh, by trying to generate a sinusoidal wave. So you can connect this sinusoidal to some speaker or something so that you can hear some sound when we do it on the actual board. Now, as I mentioned, uh, you cannot make a sine wave with negative cycle here because he doesn't support any negative voltage. So the sine wave that we are going to have will be slightly shifted. So you can think of like a DC shift will be there. So our sine wave will look something like this. Now the maximum voltage that you can have is as I mentioned VRAF on our board we have 3.3 volt as VRAF. So this peak will be at 3.3 and this center line will be at 1.65 volt and Minimum voltage will be as usual zero here. So this sine wave, it will have an equation in the form like some amplitude plus a sine omega t. In our case, this amplitude, uh, it is shifted like a DC shift is 1.65. So it will be like 1.65 plus 1.65 times sine omega. Let's write it as 2 pi by t and t. So this T represents the period of your sine wave and this T represents the point at which you are sampling it. So we can go ahead and write the code. Now there are two approaches possible here. One way is you pre-calculate all the values at these sampling instances and store it in some kind of array and at runtime you read from the array, send it to the DSE or at runtime itself you can calculate the sine values at different timing instances. So we can use the C standard header file mat.h to do it uh, for finding the sine values. So we'll be doing that approach instead of pre-calculating all the values, we'll be finding the values at runtime. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm taking a new file. So I will include the header again and I will just save it as okay, DAC.C. Okay, so first of all, we need to configure the pin cell. So pin cell one value will be it will be two followed by five zeros. So x two one two three four five. 
Now, as I mentioned, uh, to get this sinusoid, you will have to calculate the value of this curve at different time instances. So we need to decide uh, what is the sampling rate, at what rate we are going to do the sampling. But of course, that sampling rate should be more than uh, the value, the settling time, the conversion time for the DSE. So let's say our sampling period is one millisecond, which is much more than this, like thousand times more than this gas. So we'll be doing sampling at that rate. So one approach for doing that sampling at exactly one millisecond is to use our timer. So you know in timer we have this match mode and if I use match mode and set a value to get an interrupt every one millisecond, my life will be much easier. So I exactly know when one millisecond has elapsed and whenever I find like one millisecond has elapsed, I will calculate the value and I will send it. So that's the approach I'm going to use. So let's define uh, that constant at the top. So I'm saying like my sampling period, period is one millisecond, 0 0.001. And my plan is to make a sign of one hertz. So period of sign is one. So again, the advantage of this style is if you just want to change these values, you can just go ahead and change it one place and the code will be still working. Now I need to configure my timer uh, so that I get interrupt every one millisecond. So we already have the timer code here for match operation. We can just copy paste it from there. The only place we need to make change is the match register value. Here it is like five. But here we have to do a calculation like what value should be put in the timer so that we get an interrupt every one millisecond. So that value will be, uh, of course, the time at which you want an interrupt and the time period of the clock at which the timer is running. We'll be using by default internal RC oscillator, uh, which is like four megahertz. And timer by default, his peak clock is uh, CCLK by four. So he'll be running at one megahertz. Okay, so I know like timer clock period is one microsecond, one, two, three, four, five, one. So the value that I have to load is, let's call it like timer, okay, match value is I need every interrupt at one millisecond divided by time clock. Again, we better define all of them as defined so that you can easily change them. So timer match zero, I set timer, then reset start. Okay, we'll bring those functions also. Start and reset. We don't need stop because now it will be like a free running timer, but giving interrupt whenever a match is happening. Okay, so that much is done. Now what we need, so whenever we get an interrupt from timer, we need to recalculate the value of that sinusoid and send it to the DAC. So I will wait for an interrupt from the timer. Again, that code we already have here, this one. Then we are acknowledging that interrupt by right clearing it. So that also we can keep. Now let's calculate the value of the sign. So let me just call it like V out. We will declare V out. This will be a floating point number. So float V out. That will be this equation, same equation. A plus A is 1.65. So again, that 1.65, let's declare all of them as constants. So we have like V ref is there, which is like, 3.3 and we have hash define let's call like v max this is like maximum value of that sine wave this 1.65 so our equation will be like v out equal to v max plus v max times sine 2 pi by t okay so 2 times pi again some uh, cases if you include this math header file there will be a constant called m underscore pi where the value of pi is predefined. Some places 
it won't be there for example this lpc math header file or the math header file in keel rather uh, that constant is not declared pi is not declared so you will have to declare it yourself so what i can do is i will use this if and if here also this basically means if pi is not defined before that's why i said in case it is defined in math.h the line after this won't run but if it is already not defined here okay we will define it at this point again uh, this is not happening at runtime these are we call as preprocessor directive so all this analysis it might be happening at uh, compilation time itself not like at uh, runtime when your system is running okay so it will be like 3.1415 depending upon how much precision you need uh, you can define it there six five three five eight nine seven nine and three two okay that's the pi if it were defined in my uh, this will be that value okay so we need to again put hash and if otherwise nothing below that will get compiled okay so sign if it is confusing you can just declare like hash define mpy is this one and just use it no issue so two times mpy and the current sampling time so we need a constant which is tracking what is the current sampling time also so let's initialize it to zero and what we'll do is each time i get an interrupt from timer i will increment it uh, by this sampling period okay so we have this 2 pi t by capital t which is like the period of the sine wave so that also we include although it is one as i mentioned you can change it so always keep it here okay so we got the value so this is the output voltage we need and we need to convert this to the corresponding value which should be written into dac so similar to our adc the equation is the maximum value so 1023 since it is a 10 bit dac divided by v rough times v out okay so v rough times v out this is the value 10 bit value which has to be written there now as you have seen we do not directly write it we need to left shift it by six position before writing to this register now left shift operation it is supported only on integer data type so i am taking this entire thing and type casting it to int type then I can left shift by six position. Otherwise, you'll get an error saying like, okay, left shift can be applied only on integer. So this is what I am going to write as the DAC register value. So if you search for DAC here, you'll see like there is a single register, DAC control register. The bias, I will keep it as zero. Uh, we are not worried about power consumption this time. So I will simply write this value will go into the DAC register, control register. Okay, so that's it. We are done with it. Save it and let me add that here. Okay, so let's compile. There are some errors. I will match well yeah with hash define I put an equal here which is wrong another one is here we need semicolon and we need one extra line okay okay now he is happy let's go ahead and try debug So from peripherals, let's take DAC. And here is our DAC and let's run everything together. And now you can see like the values are changing. Okay, so if you are doing it on actual hardware and if you hook up a oscilloscope there, you should be able to see a sinusoid there. We have a logic analyzer here technically, but unfortunately, he cannot directly show the output from the ADC pin. That analog output he cannot show us. 
for example if I add port 0 0.26 here port 0 0.26 and even if I say it is analog type uh, you won't see anything here okay Yeah, it's showing like constantly one. Just to check like whether you have configured the pin properly under peripherals, you can go to the pin connect block and you can actually check it there. In the previous tutorials also, whenever you are using these external pins, you can check whether your pin cell configuration is right or wrong by checking this one. Here you can see P0.26, it is configured for A out. All others are default to GPIO. So all configurations are right but unfortunately his logic analyzer cannot show us. But a good thing is our logic analyzer, he can check on, not only for these external signals, he can show you the variables inside your code also. Okay. So if you look at your code, that sine wave is actually corresponding to this variable V out. So if you can see V out, uh, you can say like whether a real sine wave is coming or not. But uh, again, the problem is he cannot show you local variables, variables which are declared inside a function. Uh, he cannot show you, he will say like unknown signal. What you have to do is, this is only for testing. Once you are convinced, you should put that variable back as a local variable. What I will do is I will just declare it as a global variable outside all functions and the logic analyzer he can show up to four global variables. I will recompile and we'll go to debug again. And now I will again ask to add V out here. And this time he is happy. He is happy only because it's a global one. And keep it as unlock type and close it and just run it. And now you can actually see that sign. Okay, so again, let me repeat. Uh, this you can use when debugging. Ideally, using global variable is not a good idea. So once you are convinced, put it back. So here you can see the effect of sampling. Okay, this is not a very smooth curve. If you zoom it out, you can see like, yeah, there is like stepping, which is the quantization which is happening. So if you improve your sampling time, Basically, if you reduce your sampling time, uh, it will become smoother and smoother. You can try making some kind of piano. So assume your ADC is connected to a speaker. Now, using your GPIO, uh, you can give different kind of input, right? So it's like pressing some button. So you have to constantly monitor your GPIO, or you can enable interrupt on GPIO also, whatever you prefer. So if a particular button is pressed, uh, based on that, this period will change. Here we declared it as a constant. Instead of that, you can make it as a variable. And based on that button press, the value in that variable will change. So based on that, the frequency of this output sign will also change. So you can have multiple buttons. And when you press them, you will have uh, some kind of PN effect. Okay, so thank you. See you in the next tutorial.